So the Denver Broncos just traded a seventh round pick for Jarrell Casey, which just seems like a great move for Denver's perspective. I mean, you're giving up basically nothing, you know, a seventh round pick, not really that much. Half the guys that go in a seventh round would have still been available, uh, you know, undrafted. And in exchange for that, you're getting a Pro Bowl player. In fact, a five-time Pro Bowl player who has only missed five games in his nine-year career. And not just that, but he just turned 30 a couple months ago, so it's not like he's way up there in age or anything. I love this move from Denver's perspective. I don't understand it at all from Tennessee's perspective. My only thought is that they're just trying to get rid of his contract, but it still seems like, you know, why wouldn't some, you'd think somebody would give you a fifth round pick, right? Maybe a, maybe a third or something. A, a seventh round pick seems very low, but I guess teams just knew that they wanted to get rid of the contract and didn't want to give up much for him. He is going to be signed for 11 million, 11 million, and 13 million for the last three years of his deal. So maybe their, their thought is, hey, he could fall off a cliff. We don't want to get stuck up that contract later. I don't know, but I like this move from Denver's perspective. Because I think Casey is really good. I think you could easily make the argument that right now Casey is better than DJ Reader, and yet he's getting paid less. You know, they have to give up the seventh round pick to get him, but I think you could absolutely make that argument. And let's just get into what I like about Casey so much. There's so many things he does well. Uh, we'll start things off with this play, where what's going to happen is that it's going to be play action to the left side of the screen. And so to help sell the play action, what they're going to do is they're going to start off as though they're run blocking. And that's where Casey is. And so after the ball is snapped, you notice that he goes up and starts getting past uh, an Atlanta player. But the problem is that because of this sort of fake as though it could be a run, you now have another Atlanta player who can run over and push Casey around. So he's going to get a little bit blindsided right here. So this is not a great situation for Casey. However, watch how he barely gets moved when he gets pushed like that. And now at this point, I mean, honestly, the Atlanta player he was pushing got moved further away with that extra hit than, than Casey did. So now at this point, there's not too much you can do if you're an offensive lineman. I mean, you ideally want to try to push Casey out of the way, but Let's be honest, that is a very difficult thing to do. I mean, he's just a big guy, quite frankly. Trying to move a 300-plus pound guy who somehow, even with that, still seems stronger than his weight, it's just not going to work out too well. Casey easily gets through and even knocks the ball out and generates a fumble. So, very good play from Casey's perspective. That's definitely, I think, what people will bring up the most about Casey is just his strength. I mean, obviously, you have a... 300 plus pound guy that is what's going to get brought up a good amount and it really does have positive impacts like this one's another example where what's going to happen is that Casey is actually lined up right over there but he's going to run in he's going to run in between the left guard and center and then what they're going to do is they're going to pull another interior lineman around hopefully this will get the Tampa Bay players out of position and Casey can get through and try to get to Winston for a sack. And it worked out pretty well. I mean, as you see, Casey has some pretty decent leverage at this point, can absolutely help make a play. But again, you know, we'll have to see how this works out. We've definitely seen offensive linemen come back from worse positions than this. However, Casey does a very good job of getting around, getting to Winston. In fairness, he had a little bit of help from Winston, not really having great pocket presence there. Didn't realize that there was pressure in front of him and tried to step up in the pocket. So that absolutely played to Casey's benefit. But at the same time, I mean, that was still a very good play from Casey. Just, you know, he has that strength where if you don't get good hand placement, if you're not in great position to try to block him, you are going to be in trouble, no doubt about it. One other thing Casey can do is he's just a, a really a smart player, actually. You know, he has good football IQ. And this plays a good example of it where what's going to happen is that Tampa Bay is going to have their center and their right guard. Basically, those are the assigned man men that they're supposed to go up against. And the reason for this is because, you know, Tennessee has six guys currently on the line. You would think two would drop back in the coverage, but you don't know which two. So you basically have to give everybody on your line an assigned man to go out and block. And, you know, they have a tight end in the game, although the tight end will not be blocking for Tampa Bay, but they have a running back who is blocking. So they have six guys on six guys, basically. Your, your job is to look up, make sure that your assigned man isn't rushing the passer. If he is, you block him. If he isn't, you run over and find somebody else to hit. 
And so since that Tennessee player will drop back in the coverage, this now means that when Casey starts rushing, he's going to just walk right into a double team. Like as you see, two Tampa Bay players make sure that they swarm him. So not a perfect situation for him. The one bright side as of right now is that that Tennessee player is doing an okay job of basically just trying to get to the inside of the tackle. But, you know, Tampa Bay is all over that as well. They're going to have their right guard run over and block that out of the way. So as of this point, not a great situation for Tennessee, but Casey has an idea. Casey realizes that because of this, because the edge rusher is running to the inside of the tackle, this means a couple of things. One, it could mean that Jameis is just going to try to run outside the pocket. So that's something you could have in your, your head because, you know, containment has been given up. But two, it also tells you that the tackle is going to have to move to the inside, creating almost a, a natural twist in a sense. So he's going to run over and try to get to where that part of the play was. And he actually is able to get the Winston, doesn't get the sack, Winston gets it off, but was still able to completely disrupt that play. And, you know, oftentimes as when you're trying to rush the passer, the important thing isn't necessarily always to get the sack, but just to disrupt a play. And that's what Casey was able to do. But honestly, as good as Casey is as rushing the passer, even from the inside, where he thrives is in the running game. That's obviously where, you know, a 300-pound interior lineman is going to thrive in the running game, you would expect. So, uh, at least, you know, that's why you would have someone like that on your team. And he absolutely can really thrive in the running game. This play is a good example where it's basically going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup against the center. I say basically because a right guard is going to block him for a quick second before moving up to block a linebacker. But... It's pretty much going to just be a one-on-one -on -one matchup. However, watch how Casey starts this off by just easily winning that one-on-one -on -one matchup. Look how far he pushed Tampa Bay center Ryan Jensen far back. I mean, an easy couple of yards right off the bat. And now at this point, you look at their right guard, he can't get over to block the Tennessee player he's trying to block. Because Casey did such a good job of winning his own one-on-one -on -one matchup, there's just no space and he's still even able to run over and help make this stop. Just a really good play by Jarrell Casey. And one other play is this one, where what's going to happen is that basically Casey is going to get double teamed, and then what's going to happen is that the left tackle is going to move up to block a linebacker. So for Casey, I mean, his job at this point is not to dominate the double team. I mean, that doesn't really happen. His job is to just not get destroyed on the double team, you know, not allow himself to get completely moved out of the way try to stay in his spot as much as he possibly can. And watch how right after the ball is snapped, he doesn't get moved whatsoever. I mean, he's pretty much exactly where he was when he started. You know, he does not allow himself to get pushed whatsoever. And he is now in a pretty good spot because, you know, Tampa Bay's left tackle, Donovan Smith, he's at a point right now where if he continues to try to block Casey, then the linebacker is going to just run through the hole and be able to disrupt this play. But at the same time, if he doesn't continue to block Casey, then Casey can get into play, and that's what's going to happen. He doesn't block Casey. Casey's able to get his right arm out, help make the tackle, and that's just what this guy can do. I mean, he's a great pass rushing guy from the inside. He's a great, and I mean great, run stopper, and he's still playing at a high level. He hasn't fallen off any cliff or anything. In fact, he's one of the more durable players so far. He's been very fortunate when it comes to, comes to injuries, so that's just another small factor in all of this. I think the logic from Tennessee's perspective is simply that he would have probably been their third best defensive lineman next year. And just their thought process is we don't want to spend so much money on one position. Let's try to clear some of that up. I'm assuming that they have somebody that they plan on paying because it doesn't make sense to clear up money just to have more money. You know, you would think that they're going to probably make some sort of move, but I don't know. I mean, only getting a seventh round pick for a five time pro bowler. It's just kind of it's it's a weird thing. Uh, it, it seems like they probably could have gotten more value, but I don't know. I mean, some of these trades in the NFL are weird and, you know, at least if you're a Titans fan, at least you didn't trade DeAndre Hopkins for a second round pick. So you have that going for you. But yeah, I mean, I think this is a steal for the Denver Broncos. I really do. I think if you're a Denver Broncos fan, you're saying, let's go. I mean, we have Vaughn Miller, Bradley Chubb, now Jarrell Casey on the inside. Not to mention you have someone like Derek Wolf, who's a very good player. And you even had Mike Purcell, who kind of had a breakout year. So they have some real guys who can really play. And, I mean, adding another defensive lineman is almost always a good thing. 
I love this move from Denver's perspective. I think Denver could definitely potentially be a playoff team next year. I mean, they were very unlucky at times last year. I do think this is a team that was better than their record last year, and their record wasn't horrendous last year. So I'm pretty optimistic about the Denver Broncos, and I think this was a great move for them. But that's just my opinion. I'd like to know what you guys think. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.